so I wanted 10, but I could only come up with nine. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to do this in uh, Johnny Carson style, but few of you remember Johnny Carson's uh, or, or letter, letter style. So, uh, uh, so I, I, I didn't. I'm not going to do the the drama, but just to quickly, um, if as you're considering the Achievement School District, um, uh, you need to ask yourself: Can charter management schools be recruited? Can my management organizations be recruited where they're needed in North Carolina? Uh, a lot of your low performing schools are rural. Uh, it's very difficult to think about uh, some of the counties, uh, down east, having charter management organizations successfully um, uh, implemented there. Uh, also, at scale, one of the things that's, that's happening uh, in, in Tennessee, as you probably well know, charter management organizations are pulling out or won't agree to, to operate a school unless they can take it over grade by grade in the school system. Uh, has a, a resolution against that. Um, neighborhood schools are schools of choice. One of the reasons schools of choice may work, where they work, is that there's a great match between the parent, uh, student, and family needs and what the school offers. In a neighborhood school context, we're not doing any of that matching. We're matching a neighborhood to a school. It may not be the parent's needs within that. So um, we've got a completely different environment that we're dealing with. Uh, in New Orleans, those are all schools of choice. So uh, it's a, it, it, you know, are you uh, contemplating going schools of choice for a whole uh, locality or set of districts, or is it school by school, uh, or are they going to remain neighborhood schools? The challenge with the neighborhood school is, is uh, quite different than a school of choice. Um, how will the needs of students with disabilities be met? Some of these, these are kids who, who, many of them can do well under the right circumstances with the right set of supports. And if they don't get those supports, um, if it takes 22 weeks uh, for that to happen, um, uh, a child's future can be put in jeopardy in that. So we have to be very careful. Um, a, a lot of these kids will achieve on the same level. Um, and I, I've got a, a study right now of students with disability in North Carolina, um, they're in almost 90% of the classrooms. There, there's one or more of these students. So when you think about that, inclusive classrooms really is inclusive in North Carolina. You should congratulate yourself for that. But it also means the needs are spread across lots and lots of schools. And um, we have to really think about that because charters typically, because they're schools of choice, um, may not accept students with disabilities. So um, we have to learn something new as a part of this process. Um, and just handling, so, so what's happened, ASD now has a coordinator of, for students with disabilities that helps pool funds from multiple charter organizations and provide these services. So there are things that are being worked out, and I think you can be successful with it. It just takes a lot of pre-planning. Um, balance between oversight and autonomy. Are you going to let a school run and fail? Um, or you're going to go into that school and monitor uh, the ASD puts uh, a team of individuals uh, once a year did put a team when they had raised to the top funds to monitor what's going on in the school. Very thorough. I went down and participated with them two or three times. Really incredible uh, process, but that was dropped from race to the top funds. First thing it goes from resources to get limited or oversight and you just don't know what's going on in the school without that. So uh, think very carefully about who you give autonomy to and how you provide oversight. Um, the school selected for turnover. Um, if you can't take them all, which ones get selected? And that's been a big controversy in, uh, in Nashville, where I live now. It's a very delicate process with the neighborhood. So um, a lot of ASD resources are going into this um, selection of schools. And then uh, how are you going to match the neighborhood needs with charter organizations and make sure that, that, that those match and the kind of approach. If, if, if the kids can't read, it's going to be real hard to have a project-based learning um, charter that becomes effective. So um, you have to be very careful about that matching process. Um, talented teachers. We've got a huge amount of money coming in by people who are very concerned about recruitment and talent and business. We're working with them every day. Um, but this is a real challenge. Uh, TFA in North Carolina are some of the most effective teachers you have in the state. Um, I believe 80% are gone um, after three years. And so that creates a constant recruitment process. 
uh, want them. Uh, think they do a fantastic job. Uh, but uh, what that's meant for the way we manage schools, especially schools that aren't used to this turnover, uh, has been phenomenal. And um, it's only likely to get worse in terms of retention rather than better. Because the, the, the folks who, who are going into these schools have lots of other options, and they pursue those options if, uh, if they feel like that's in their best interest. Uh, the whole school versus grade by grade turnover, um, it's just a very difficult uh, management process uh, when teachers feel, like I said, they have a uh, How are you going to motivate them to come and do everything they can do for those kids when they're um, that last year, they're probably spending a huge amount of time searching for another job um, because they know the next year they're gone. So um, we call it an Ashenfeld or dip in economics. Um, that that what happens that year before you know you're going to go, and um, are the kids getting the best effort? It's a it's a very difficult challenge. And then um, how parents and community provide input. I believe ASD is on its third or fourth strategy in four years of how to. Uh, have communities put input into these um, these schools. They've tried it overall. They, they're now trying it by, by school. Um, there's no elected board or local set of individuals who are responsible for these schools. So how, that, I'm not saying elected board is absolutely needed, but uh, you just have to think about what's, if, if the parents can't reflect their, their choices in a vote, how are they going to get their, their choices reflected? And it takes a lot of consideration, I think, to set this up where it functions well. All of these challenges, I think, can be overcome. All of them should be overcome before kids are, are placed in uh, organizations um, that may not be ready to, to, to meet them. So I'm um, sorry for an odd number list, but um, uh, I think it's, it's really important. And um, when you're talking about these, um, don't leave step four out. Don't leave teaching and learning out and just talk about adults and the structure of, kid, uh, of schools. Talk about the kids. Thanks a lot.